residents rescued by boat and by air, including this mother and child. Even the first responders needing help. Now more evacuation orders as rivers keep on rising. Officials warning the worst may be to come. If you are refusing to leave during this mandatory evacuation, then you need to do things like notify your legal next of kin. Our team fanned out throughout the disaster zone with the new threats this morning. Shark attack, a man boogie boarding killed in Cape Cod. The first deadly shark attack there in more than 80 years. I never wanted to be that guy at the edge of the ocean screaming shark at the top of my lungs. The shark believed to be a great white were live on the scene this morning. Stunning arrest. A Border Patrol agent in Texas charged with murdering four people. Authorities calling him a serial killer. How he was captured. And fake out the college player who stunned his opponent, staging a fake fair catch, sprinting past his defenders. This is going to be a touchdown. How he pulled off the epic trick play. Live from ABC News in New York, this is Good Morning America. I'm so confused. Yes. What is that trick Long play? Down. Play I until the even... whistle blows. Rule number one. Okay. Wow. Yeah. You uh, pulled it off. Ron Claiborne is going to explain all of it to even to uh, sports dunce like me coming up. Good morning, everybody. Paul is off this morning. Very happy to have Adrian Bankert and Whit Johnson on the desk. Good to be here. Let's get right to the breaking news because there's a lot of it and it all involves Florence. Now a tropical depression but bringing major flash flooding to the Carolinas right now. Overnight, the flooding spreading into the inland cities. You're looking at the pictures out of Lumberton, North Carolina. And look at these new drone images out of New Bern, the town underwater. Rescuers are doing all they can to help those trapped by the rising floodwaters, evacuating people by bus, by boat, and helicopter. Sadly, the death toll climbing overnight. The monster storm now blamed for at least 13 deaths. We have team coverage on the ground in the storm zone, but first, let's go to Rob, who's here in studio tracking the storm. Rob, good morning to you. Good morning, Dan. As we feared, the second part of this storm is shaping up to be the worst part, the flooding, which continues. Uh, and I've counted over 20 counties now under a flash flood warning to at least uh, mid-afternoon, and that is just widespread stuff. And you can see the rainfall continuing to feed off uh, the ocean, the back side of this, the center of it's about uh, 20 miles southwest of Columbia. It'll begin to drift down off towards the west, but you see those bands just shift ever so slowly to the southwest. So we're seeing those uh, flash flooding uh, emergencies in some cases across parts of southeast North Carolina. Another 10 inches potentially coming with this throughout the day today and then during the day tomorrow this begins to stretch over towards Roanoke where they're asking people to evacuate in floodplains in the event of seeing mudslides and then skits into the northeast. We'll talk more about that in just a few bit. Guys back over to you. All right. Rob, thank you very much. The, with the waters rising, we are seeing some incredible heroism from both first responders and Good Samaritans, all scrambling to rescue people trapped by these floods. Now, there is a massive effort to try to reach those stranded, but many local roadways and interstates are impassable. ABC's Amy Robach is in Wilmington with the latest on the destruction of this powerful storm. Good morning, Amy. That's right. Good morning, Adrian. We are seeing more and more of that destruction from Florence as we made our way uh, around the Wilmington area yesterday. Down trees like this one here behind me, unfortunately, are a very common sight. They are scattered throughout this area. And of course, those floodwaters rising and surrounding towns, enveloping towns. People are stranded and rescuers are once again out and about today trying to save those who need their help. Overnight, tropical storm Florence spreading inland after ravaging the Carolina coastline. The destruction here apparent. Piers ripped from the beaches while boats drifting into front yards. This morning, that monster storm claiming more victims, the death toll rising to 13. Stay off the roads in most parts of the state of North Carolina. Don't make yourself someone who needs to be rescued. Those rescues numbering in the 100s on Saturday. Volunteers and safety teams moving in, aiding in rescue efforts on the ground. And in the air, the United States Coast Guard seen here saving a mother and a baby, making helicopter rescues over the still rising waters. And others taking boats door to door, looking for those who need help, even saving stranded house pets. Our affiliate WWAY forced to go off the air following a tornado warning in the area during their broadcast. All right. We gotta go. Nearly 700,000 residents left in the dark as restoring power has proved to be a slow process. 
Downed power lines, litter roads, and neighborhoods. People in Harris County who rode out the storm now scrambling for goods. This video, captured by the News and Observer, shows a mob of residents forcing their way in this Harris teeter. Overnight, officials telling ABC News the worst flooding is yet to come. It will produce catastrophic flooding over parts of North and South Carolina for some time. Families returning home to find devastation. The carpets, the floors, everything is soaking wet. This morning I got up and I said, I'm getting back to the house. And we walked this thing chest deep, holding hands out in the middle of this road. And we made it to the house. Carol Rogers says she is grateful she evacuated. And that is my room there that I would have been asleep in, so... I would have been killed, probably, if I'd have stayed. Government officials continuing to warn that this isn't over now, concerned that the flooding will move inland. We need to get ready to take action. We've said this for the past several days. We need people to take this seriously. And here in Wilmington, another concern, looting. Uh, overnight, we heard of a looting incident in the dollar store. Several arrests were made, but as a result, uh, county officials here have extended or expanded uh, a, a curfew for all residents, 5 p.m. to 6 a.m. So many problems, and they're growing here in North Carolina, guys. All right, thank you so much, Amy, uh, for that reality check. Certainly uh, nothing to take for granted this morning. With Florence basically sitting on top of the care Carolinas still dumping torrential rain. Rescue efforts are taking place in hard-hit Jacksonville, North Carolina. And rivers spilling over their banks, flooding expected to impact the area for days or even several weeks. ABC's Victor Okendo has more. Victor, good morning. Good morning, Wit and Adrian. It has not stopped raining here in Jacksonville, and these floodwaters continue to rise. Just take a look behind me. You can see the water almost reaching the sign on that billboard. And just beyond that, that box truck, it is stuck. The water almost reaching the windows there. Florence continues devastating this area. This morning, relentless rain across Jacksonville, North Carolina. Florence flooding the city. The town of Richlands inundated. We spotted this couple wading in neck deep water. I was raised around this area, so this is the first I've seen it this bad. And I was actually having to swim there for a little bit. Down the road, Good Samaritans dropping their boats into floodwaters, searching for people trapped inside their homes. The catastrophic flooding, dangerous for rescuers too. Our station WTVD there as this Humvee got stuck with the Marine and first responders on board. Locals giving them a much needed hand. Mike Gallagher and his wife decided to ride out the storm at home. We would go if there was somewhere to go. But if we leave and go to town, We'd be living in a van. But shortly after we talked, with water levels quickly rising around them, they packed up and hit the road. But those unable to leave on their own, pulled from their houses by swift water rescue teams, finally making it to safety, bringing what they could hold on the backs of these military trucks. My dog woke me up at 5 o'clock in the morning. I reached down and petted him. He was wet. Hey, oh, man. So I put my feet over and that much water. And is that when you decided time to that, leave? Well, that's when I grabbed everybody. Jim Corzine and his wife losing everything. I have this. This is that's it. all you got right now. We're alive and we're out. Some things can't be replaced, but that's just the way it goes. City officials tell me they rescued about 150 people yesterday. They're now staying at schools that have been converted into shelters. The latest radar estimates show that nearly 30 inches of rain has fallen in Jacksonville, and it looks like more is on the way. Wit. Victor Okendo, our thanks to you. Joining us now is the mayor of Fayetteville on the phone with us from North Carolina, Mitch Colvin. Mayor, thanks so much for taking the time to speak with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Parts of Fayetteville are under mandatory evacuation. You're expecting historic flooding along the Cape Fear River. What is the flooding situation there right now, and what are you expecting in the days ahead? Well, we're, we're in the midst of uh, uh, 15 to 20 inch uh, inches of rainfall. Uh, we are expecting that our rivers will rise to levels that we haven't seen uh, during the last 50 or 75 years. Um, we have a significant amount of, of creeks and tributaries that are already starting to show signs of, of flooding. And so we're asking an impression upon our residents that live in these prone areas to please evacuate uh, while they still have time. 
Now, you acknowledge that you can't force people to leave, but you're warning that those who stay behind are in imminent danger, even saying that they should notify their legal next of kin in case they don't survive. How seriously are people taking that warning? Well, we have a lot of people that are complying, but we wanted to make sure that they didn't take this lightly and they didn't become complacent by what they saw or could see because this, these situations can change quite rapidly. But yeah, I wanted to make sure that they understood the, the message loud and clear that if you decide to stay, uh, please make sure that your, your next of kin is notified of what your choices are. Because if you are in a situation of, of a life-threatening event, that help may not be available or will not be available. Certainly a dire warning there. And we've been seeing help and resources sent to the areas from all over the federal government, local levels, volunteer groups. Do you feel you are prepared for what's to come? Well, we are almost as prepared as the organization can be, but some things can't be anticipated. So as you said before, our, my governor, Roy Cooper, has been phenomenal with uh, getting to our area, making sure that the state uh, is lined up and ready to go. I also like to thank the president for the disaster declaration. And the members of Fort Bragg have been great. The leadership is there and ready to go. And so uh, we are as prepared as you can be, but some things you can't prepare for. So we'll leave the rest in God's hands and try to get the message out to our citizens. Mayor Colvin, thanks again for taking the time to speak with us. We're wishing you the very best in the difficult days ahead. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Wow. And one of the major concerns there, the Cape Fear River, they expect that it will double the flood stage. So they're expecting historic flooding, and really it hasn't even gotten started yet. Yes, as yeah. Rob has been saying, this story is just beginning. Yep. With thank you. President Trump hit Twitter overnight to send his condolences to the victims of Florence. He is expected to, vi to visit the disaster zone this week. But amidst all of the Florence news, Mr. Trump has also been seemingly preoccupied by another storm, the one that hit Puerto Rico a year ago. So let's bring in ABC News Chief White House Correspondent John Carl, who will be hosting this week later this morning. John, good morning. As, as Florence bears down, why is the president so fixated on the previous Hurricane Maria, which hit Puerto Rico last year? Well, it's a little bizarre, Dan, but the president has said publicly this was the great unsung success, uh, the federal response to, uh, to, to Puerto Rico and Hurricane Maria. Certainly it has not seen that way uh, by, by most people. And then he had this bizarre situation where he was taking issue with the official death count. This confounded even the president's own top allies. We've seen several of them, uh, ranging from Paul Ryan, the Speaker of the House, uh, to the governor of Florida, come forward and say no. They accept the death toll of nearly 3,000 uh, killed by Maria and the aftermath and disagree with the president on this. But I've got to tell you, the president has not taken any questions on this uh, from the White House press. Uh, and since he started t doing this, uh, the, the, uh, there's not been a press briefing at the White House. So the White House not eager to answer questions about this. Let me switch to another subject, uh, another sore subject for the White House. We got bombshell news on Friday. Paul Manafort. The former chairman of the Trump campaign for five months, he is now cooperating with the special counsel in the Russia probe. So what are you hearing from your sources on this Sunday morning about how much concern there may or may not be in the West Wing? Well, the official line is there's absolutely no concern that Manafort has nothing damaging to offer on the president. But, but Dan, there is clearly concern behind the scenes. This is the highest level individual uh, to come forward to say they will cooperate with the, uh, the investigation. So you now have the president's personal lawyer, you have his former national security advisor, and now the person who ran his campaign during those critical summer months all cooperating with Mueller. That has got to be a source of significant concern. Much more news on this front to come for sure. Uh, John Carl, we really appreciate it. Thanks for joining us on a Sunday morning. And I want to remind everybody, John has a big show this morning. He's going to speak with the U.S. Coast Guard Commandant and uh, North Carolina Emergency Management Director about the latest on Florence. He's also going to break down the significance of the, the guilty plea and cooperation deal by Paul Manafort with the special counsel. It's all coming up on this week right here on ABC later this morning. And we're going to turn now, though, to another big story this morning, the first fatal shark attack in Massachusetts in more than 80 years. Yeah, the victim, a 26-year-old man, bitten as horrified beachgoers watched helplessly. ABC's Ariel Reshef is on Cape Cod this morning with more. That's right, Adrian. This was the first deadly shark attack here since the 1930s. It comes as experts say great whites are flocking to the area looking for food. It's just a 
giant eruption of water. Terror in the water off the coast of Cape Cod turning deadly. Have a report of an unknown shark bite male party. 26 year old Arthur Medici from Massachusetts boogie boarding 30 yards offshore Saturday when he was suddenly attacked by a shark. This photo of him on the right taken just before that fateful swim. They are currently carrying the party up to the parking lot at Newcomb Hollow Beach. Dragged to the beach by horrified onlookers. I never wanted to be that guy at the edge of the ocean screaming shock at the top of my lungs and that happened today. First responders performing CPR in a parking lot before rushing Medici to a hospital, but he did not survive. Our ABC affiliate WCVB capturing these sharks swimming in the water just hours after the fatal incident. It's the first deadly shark attack in the area in more than 80 years, but the second dangerous encounter just this summer. Last month, a 61 year old doctor from New York gravely wounded after being bitten just four miles up the coast. And then I was attacked suddenly. Weeks before in Cape Cod, two great whites spotted yards offshore. And this great white leaping from the water, lunging at a shark scientist. You know, when you've got a, a prey item that's tied to the beach, you've got predators like sharks moving in to try to get to them. And the, and the general public needs to be incredibly vigilant. And as you can see, the beach in this area is closed to swimmers since that deadly attack. Experts tell us beachgoers should avoid deeper waters and anywhere where seals line the shore. Guys. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much, Ariel. Very sobering. He was only 30 yards offshore. I would be swimming in a pool. Yeah, well. From now on. No. After hearing that. Well, let's talk, uh, check in on the weather and go back to Rob Marciano. Good morning, Rob. Good morning again. They are not swimming in the beaches of North Carolina. They have been for several days. This radar image really hasn't changed much, nor has this tornado watch extended again and expanded now to include Myrtle Beach. The upper right side of these storms have a little bit more spin, and that's why we, we fear the threat for tornadoes, and that's in effect till 8 o'clock tonight. And then the track of this, just a tropical depression now, but the track of this eventually brings it up towards the northeast, but the actual feeder band still will be tapped in basically to the Gulf of Mexico. That's why we're, we continue to see these uh, rain bands from Myrtle Beach to Wilmington. And even as the center gets towards Roanoke and then eventually up towards Pittsburgh, you can see that the, the tapping of the moisture still is from the south. So it will continue to rain hard in these spots and maybe some heavy downpours across the northeast as well. That's a check on what's happening with Florence. Time now for a look at your local forecast. Hello and good morning, Washington. Meteorologist Alex Liggett, very cloudy out there today. Muggy, even some patchy fog this morning. Scattered showers possible by the afternoon and evening. Highs in the lower 80s. Rain will become better a likelihood tonight as we'll see more moisture streaming ahead. And we'll have, be dealing with the remnants of Florence tomorrow. Highs around the 80 degree mark. Those remnants will kind of hang around on Tuesday. Temperatures in the lower 80s, but beautiful conditions. They will return Wednesday for the end of the work week. Low humidity, temperatures in the mid 80s. We had some hope, didn't we, when Florence weakened a little bit before it made landfall, but we knew that the second half of this storm is going to be the worst of it. Yes. That's just starting. You've wow. been saying it all along, and we'll continue to follow it right here on ABC. Yeah, Robert, better. thank you. Uh, the words I'm about to say are freighted with extra meaning this morning for reasons we will explain soon, but here we go. Uh, a lot of other news this morning, and for that, as always, we kick it over to Dr. Ron Claiborne. Yes, my medical license was revoked. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to tell you, folks. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Good morning, everyone. We're going to begin in Massachusetts, where the governor of that state announcing that the last of the thousands of residents who had to evacuate after Thursday's deadly gas line explosions, they were finally able to return home this morning. They will be able to return home this morning. This is firefighters investigate a new gas odor in the town of Lawrence uh, on Saturday. The NTSB says its final report on the cause of those explosions that rocked the towns of Lawrence, North Andover and Andover, and that killed one man could take as long as two years, if you can imagine that. In Texas, a U.S. Border Patrol agent is under arrest and charged with the murders of four women in what authorities are calling a two-week serial killing spree in the city of Laredo. The suspect identified as 35-year-old Juan David Ortiz. He was captured after another woman who says that she was kidnapped by him was able to escape and called the police. Overseas, Hong Kong and uh, southern China under highest alert this Sunday is Typhoon Mangut has made landfall after pounding the Philippines on Saturday. At least 28 people in the Philippines were killed and thousands of others evacuated with scientists.